Hello there, I'm Sirfancy and in this tutorial I will show you how to make audio visualizer for your game. It doesn't have to be for your game, if you are making video clip or anything like that, you can use that as well. Behind me you can already see stuff that I'm going to show you today, so let's not waste your time and get to it. Alright then, let's get to work. I have created just empty project, there's a third person template, which you can see right here, blah blah blah, and I'm using version 4.26 from, uh, from Unreal Engine, but any new version should work. The important thing is that you need to have a plugin enabled, so let's look into plugin. And if we look into audio, you should find here audio synesthesia. Audio synesthesia. Make sure that it is enabled and let's pretend that we don't see this beta version. For me it worked pretty fine, I could package the game and everything seems to be fine. So make sure that you have it enabled and if you have to restart the project. Another thing is that I have here prepared some sound, for me it's just a Vivaldi right here. So you got the idea what it is and make sure that if you, if you are importing something it's in VMA or something that will support Unreal Engine. Alright, that's it for preparation, so let's get started. First of all, right click and we will create here in sounds analysis, we have to click on synesthesia NRT, this thing and we will work with constant. You can of course work with loudness and I haven't found a really good way to work with onset, but you may found the use for that. Uh, primary are going to use constant. Loudness may be interesting if you want to visualize only very loud sounds. So let's click on constants, select it and call it sound underscore anarchy. Let's open that and a setting leave your default constant QRT setting or if you want you can create your own but for sound you have to select your new sound. In my case it's a Vivaldi. So let's put it here. And now let's create blueprint that will set up whole visualization thing. So let's create blueprint actor, a uh, blueprint class of actor, and let's call it just sound and um, master underscore bp. And let's open that. Let's put here a component audio. Leave it right here. All right. Now let's go into event graph and take your audio. And what you want to do is to set sound right here. And let's set sound, you can find it and set it here, but for now we will promote it to variable and just call it sound. Alright, connect it after event begin play and as our sound, let's set here song that you are going to use. In my case, it's a Vivaldi right here and we don't need any of that. Alright, now we will have to create another variable because we need to know how long that song is. So let's take our variable sound and give me its length. So, which is, uh, I believe, called duration. Yeah, we will have to call it duration, get duration, promote it to variable and connect it right after this. All right, now let's make it a bit more interesting. We'll have to add here a new event. I believe it's bit, uh, no, bind event on uh, audio playback, it's called, I believe. Let's disable context menu and we want bind event on audio playback percent. Click on that, wonderful. And as target, let's set our audio right here and you of course have to take event from that so let's take it from here and create here add the custom event and it will be playback change now that should get us rid of that error so now what you want to do is to create here a new variable so let's add here variable and call it plate time and make sure that it's float all right and you want to set that after the playback will change so to, uh, to what number you will want to set it is simply our duration times playback percent. So let's set it float times float and connect it. And now we also need to find reference for that new asset we have created, that sound unerty. So let's create a new variable and here in variable type let's put here constant q unrt. Open that and click as object reference and let's call it constant underscore ref. After you compile, you can set default value, which will be sound anarchy, which is exactly this one we have created here. Wonderful. So now let's get our constant reference. Let's get it and set it to get the normalized channel constant Q at the time. You may want to disable context sensitive if you can find it, but you should find it without a problem right here. And in our seconds, let's set our plate time, which is this one that we are setting here. And from here, we will take for loop. So let's stay. They put here for each loop, connect it right here. And now we have to do something with that. So let's start by putting here some object. So add component, let's, let's do sphere, it should be fine. 
And what we will do on our for loop is set its scale. Set, set world scale 3D will be fine. And what you want to do is to is to set it to float times float and connect our array right here. And let's set it by 10. I wonder how big that will be, but we will see. We will see. Uh, but before that, we also have to play the song. So let's put here our audio and play the song. So play, just play. Start time zero, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's try to put it in here and test it. So click on play and switch it to simulate. Do, 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 and see what it does. And look at that. It seems to react pretty fine to our sound. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see it in a regular game. Yeah, that seems to work pretty good. All right, now let's make it a bit more interesting. I will add here a new material, something emissive, because we are making sound visualizer. Of course, it has to be emissive. So let's call it emissive underscore master. And let's do just something really simple. So right click, put here constant, constant free vector, promote it to parameter, and convert, convert it to parameter, call it color. And you know what? I'm gonna put it as a color because it's much more fancy. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Anyway, put here another constant and again promote it to param convert it to parameter and set it as intensity. And what you want to do is to put your default value as base color and then set here multiply and put it as our emissive color right here and apply it. All right, now let's right click on it and create here material instance and let's call it emissive underscore test underscore mat and what you want to do is click on color and intensity and set it to let's do something pinkish that will be cool and intensity let's do 50 oh that looks cool look at that all right and we will set it to our sound master so sphere and material let's set it to emissive test material all right, click on play, and now it's looking much more like uh, some wonderful visualizer. But now let me actually show you how you can create here different types of visualizer, because you probably don't want to use only one object. So what I will do is to delete our sphere from here, and it will, it will create error probably here. Let's delete that thing. And what I will do actually is create here a new blueprint that will be actor and let's call it audio element underscore BP. And what you want to do here is put here whatever object you want. Let's say that I will use cube. That's probably the best one. And just put it right here. Let's put here one and to do, do that seems cool. And now let's just duplicate it a few times. So let's create here something like a circle. And it will be probably easier if I just take here a cylinder, scale it up and put it on that. So you can create here something like an actual circle. All right, that should be cool. Worst circle I have ever done, but it will work. The shape right now doesn't really matter, it's just for a demonstration. But let's uh, let's set it up somehow. So let's go back into Soundmaster and always make sure that even if you can't see it in the game, that blueprint has to be in the game. So it always needs to be in the level. And what I will do is to go into Construct Script and on Construction, let's get all actors of class. And that will be, of course, our audio element, PP. And let's just promote it to variable. And I will call that audio elements and now if we get back into audio graph after our for each loop we will take our audio elements get a copy get a copy here and take our array right here and now from here you can set scale and do same thing as we did before so set the world scale for our cube and now let's change it a little bit because i want to change only my z axis so let's connect z here and set my y and x to 0 0.2 right and connect it right in loop body and let's see what that will give us 
And look at that, that's looking pretty good. It's giving us some error, so let's see what it is about. And it's probably just trying to find the find to trying to find reference for our cube, even if it can't find it. So we will simply add here is valid. So let's put it here. That should fix our problem. Our object will be, of course, from here. And if it is valid, it will continue. If it's not, not gonna happen. That should get rid of that error. Let's see. Oh, error seems to be gone. All right, let's make it a bit bigger. So let's do 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. And here you go. If you put here, for example, three or four times as many of them, you will see quite a good uh, quite a good audio visualizer. And you can create here whatever shape you want, of course. Let's make it a bit more of a cube. All right, I somehow managed to make even worse cube than I made our circle, but that doesn't matter because as you can see it works and it keeps that shape that I wanted originally. Alright, let's put here let's put here also our material because everything looks better if it's shiny. Let's be real here. Um uh, save test to do, do and you can of course set it to changing colors, etc etc. Let me show you one more thing. Right now you can see that it's quite structured and it's always one side is up our and the other side is up and it's basically following its frequency. But if you want to have it a bit more random, basically from all around you, what you can do after our construct... Oh no, I'm in, bad, uh, in wrong element. You have to go into Soundmaster BP. What you can do in our construction script is after you will collect it, let's shuffle it. So let's put here shuffle and have it like that. Let's see now. Now you can see that it's much more shuffled as you would guess, like a deck of cards. All right, and let's do one more thing. I want to show you how to create that line where it's always showing only one of them up, up and down. It doesn't change that much, but it's moving. So let's set it up by, by deleting all of these. Yep, let's delete all of them. And we won't have to do that with our construction script. Let's just disable that. Let's just move this thing here and get it away. So. What you want to do here on our loop body of always when it happens, so let's spawn actor from class. And that actor will be of course audio element. And as our spawn transform, let's use for that our default scene root right here. Get world location, connect it right in here. Rotation you can leave as it is. But what we will do is of course to change our scale. So for our scale, let's right click on it, split structure pin, X and Y let's leave to one and our Z let's set to again multiply float times float and let's try times five and put it on our Z. But now it will be of course just spawning them on one place if I put, oh, I already have it here. So let's leave it here. It will be probably just spawning them. Yep, exactly, which is a bit buggy. We don't want that. What you want to do is to go into audio element and add here some movement. So let's put here event kick and let's add local offset. And now you also now you kind of have to guess where you want to move it. So let's set that it will be X and about five. And let me try to put it in the game to see how fast it is moving. So let's delete sound master for now because that would make it messy. Put that thing here and click on play. And it's moving pretty pretty well, but I would probably use in this case Y and let's move it by 10 units. And that's pretty good. All right, let's see what happens now when I put here our sound master, if it will be moving fast enough. And probably, you know what, let's not have our scale on one, let's put it on zero, three for X and Y. And now, and you can see it's spawning them way too fast and it, it has like thousand actors already. Well, that's bad, that's very bad. So first of all, let's take our audio element again and on our event begin play, let's put here short delay. And after two seconds, I want to destroy it. So well, you know what, let's, let's do five seconds. So destroy actor, that should help us at least a little bit, but we are still spawning way too many of them. So what we will simply do in our sound master, let's take loop body 
and put here short delay. 0.2 seconds is way too much. Let's try 0.1 and I'm afraid that it will be still too much. So let's click on play. And look at that. That's looking pretty decent. But let's change it a little bit. Let's try 0.5 and I would probably scale down X and Y. And maybe let it delete a bit sooner. Let's try three seconds. All right, now let's click on play. And look at that. That's looking pretty well. And you can see that it's getting, it get, it's getting deleted now. I, I can't even speak from that. But I would say that we are getting pretty much what we want. And you can see that we don't have more than 90 actors at the same time. So let's try to put it in the game, click on play, and look at that. It all of course depends on what kind of music you are using, but, uh, music or sound you are using, but hey, I would say that we got pretty good audio visualizer for ourselves. If you want to have bigger difference between different elements, so let's just take sound master, multiply it by 10, and let's also put this guy down, something like that, click on play. And look at that. And the thing is also that the sound I am using, I should be able to jump through that. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a game idea for you, you can jump through sound. Alright, that's about it. I hope that you learned something. If you did, feel free to leave a like down. Or if you are interested in other stuff that I am doing, I have Instagram somewhere here, so you can follow that. I do mostly VR games. I make new VR game every week, so you can check that out. And huge thank you to everyone on the Patreon. And also on the Patreon, you can find complete project files for this, just as I finished it right now. I'm gonna zip it and not touch it anymore. Never. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. See ya. Surfancy out.